I'd like to welcome everybody for the 11th uh, Oil and Gas High Performance Computing Conference. It's really good to see all your friends this one times a year and, and you know, connect with them and everything. We, we do see each, uh, each other other times, but this is one of the venues that we use to network. And this is really a forum for networking for you. We really encourage you to use the, the day and a half here to really connect and, and have conversations about whatever it relates to HPC, whether it is technology, workforce, people. And I do want you to take one minute, as a, a second here, and I want you to look to your left, and then I want you to look to your right, and I want you to look behind you, and then in front of you, and then tell me how many saw at least half of them being of the opposite sex. <laughs> now, that should really worry you, and it should worry us as a community, that almost the only hands that came up were females. And this is a problem. We know it's a problem. We do lip service to the problem, and we really have work to do to help us change that problem. So we need a commitment together to make a change in that and help us move forward, because we can't afford to continue tapping into half our potential workforce. And this is a big challenge. So each of you that are in the process of interviewing and hiring and whatever you do in that scheme, make sure you leave your biases, because we all have biases, trust me. If you don't admit you have a bias, then you're already failing. We have biases. You need to learn about your biases, and then you need to consider those when you get in there and you interview and you recruit people. So work on that. I would love to see one or two years from now that this picture changes. And part of it is each of you, particularly you male, bring a female colleague, recruit somebody and bring them here, help bring them into the community because we need you. So with that uh, preach, <laughs> uh, let's move on. This is a welcoming, if you are really excited about it. Uh, it is a forum for engaging around HPC. Uh, a lot of the conversation uh, in this day and age is really around exascale, and today's program is really focused on what's going on in the exascale project, and so we're our opening keynote with Doug Cothey uh, and several talks, and then the panel at the end of the day. But as I said, this is about engage, educate, and network around technology and technology and technology. And that's technology workforce, that is technology as the next generation of infrastructure, it's technology as software. All of these things are important. So please use this time and engage around that. Uh, a little bit about uh, a safety moment. So we're in this room 103, BRC 103. Uh, I am not, I have not been informed that there will be any form of alarms or fire drill or anything like that. So if there is uh, a fire alarm going off, please convene outside to the red square, which is out past uh, the, the seating area outside here. That's our safety place. And in terms, so let me see here. Uh, and then there's the other thing that's important to note is there's restrooms back here, which is around the auditorium on the back side. You can't get it from there, but you have to go from that side. There's restrooms here when, uh, off the elevators, when you came off the elevators. And there are some restrooms on the second floor up here, as well as I think there may be something over in this area uh, here. But so th those are the logistics. Uh, most of you probably have already been over at the event hall, exhibit hall, where all the breaks will take place. But uh, this is where we are now, and this is where we'll spend most of our time. The other lecture hall will be upstairs in BRC 280, where we have a uh, ses ses uh, session tomorrow. Uh, um, so the, you know, the Oil and Gas High Performance Computing Conference, we first launched that, or some of my colleagues launched that in 2007 at the Society for Exploration Geophysics uh, International Conference in San Antonio. We did another one with the, the, what uh, I was involved in in Las Vegas. We decided that we wanted to do it just in our hometown in Houston. It made perfect sense. So we started uh, here at Rice. We called it a workshop. Workshop kind of just kept growing, and my boss insisted, and he's not here, so I can say, tell you this, uh, he insisted that you can't call something that has uh, 400 plus people a workshop anymore because it's not a workshop, it's a conference. So we changed it. Uh, we're now creating workshops within the conference. So you know, we, we, we stay true to our, uh, our ambitions about having a community that we engage with and try to find vehicles to 
really uh, communicate and engage in you know, a little bit more. The community is the oil and gas industry, it's the IT industry, and it's the academia and sort of national lab, which is sort of the national research enabling and education workforce. So we're all sort of drivers of this community, and I'm really pleased to see uh, a larger number than we normally have of our uh, national labs. And I hope to grow that. I hope to have them uh, more present as we move forward, because I think there's increasing synergy and a need for a partnership around the HPC and, and large scientific code and, uh, that, that interfaces with the two communities. Couldn't do this without some key people. There's a large program committee. You can see them with their little fancy ribbon on their uh, name badges. But uh, without the program committee, I couldn't do it. Can the program committee stand up if you're in the room so we can uh, recognize them just very quickly? Because you see, they are here. They do invaluable work. And uh, so thank you. Now, there are two other people. And I think you most have already run into them. And honestly, the program committee would be absolutely useless without Victoria and Debbie. So do thank them when you see them hustling around here. When you ask a question, when you see something works, it's because of them. If something is not working the way you want it to, it's my fault. There is no other uh, way about that. So please do make sure that you thank them and the number of student workers we have here. This is our spring break. They're here committing and helping us do uh, HPC. Uh, couldn't do it without the sponsors. We have gold sponsors. We have silver sponsors. We have bronze sponsors. You see them on the banners next to us. We have media partners. So there are some media represented here. Some are here, some are remote. Uh, and uh, we also are very proud of some of our industry sponsors for fellowships. As I said earlier, workforce is important. Workforce start with the pipeline and university is part of that. The industry coming in and helping fund fellowships, whether it's a partial fellowship, full fellowship, is critically important. We had a long conversation earlier today about that. And uh, because of all of you and the industry sponsorship here, the conference itself is also able to help sponsor some fellowships. So that's really exciting. And, and you know, you see some of the banners or in the program, there's a page lists, listing some of the names of the students and, and uh, uh, the degrees they're pursuing. A uh, couple of save the dates. Uh, we launched last fall a data science conference. Um, so we will be back next fall. That will actually be in, a, uh, in, in the fall, October 8th and 9th. That's also a Monday and a Tuesday here in this very venue. First year we did the data science conference. We had 400 people. So we do kind of, you know, it's a pretty hot topic. There's an interesting, unique interface between data science and HPC. So we are starting to, uh, to leverage that. And there's going to be lots of interesting conversations about how these feeds off each other. Data science conference is much broadly. It's not focused just on oil and gas. We're bringing a much broader industry perspective on it but industry is a key partner. And then next spring, notice it's a week earlier. We're kind of back to week one in March. Uh, for those of you who are hoping it to be Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm sorry, it's going to be Monday, Tuesday. So <laughs> I knew one person would shake their, their head. So, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But we'll back first week of, of uh, March next year. Uh, and that will not collide with Rice's spring break and Texas spring break overall which actually created somewhat of a challenge with some of our speakers we wanted to get this year. And uh, with that, I just want to remind people to turn off their cell phones. And then I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Keith Gray, and uh, so he can introduce our, our keynote speaker. Thanks, John. There's two additional people. Hey, you don't have to applaud. There's two additional people that will help me introduce Doug Cothy. David Martin is the Industrial uh, Relationship Manager at Argonne, and Susie Titchener is the Industrial Relationship Manager at Oak Ridge. Thanks very much for helping organize this. Why don't you all just tell us a bit about Doug and ECP, <laughs> and we'll get started. I, in fact, I'm not going to put him on the spot quite that badly. Doug comes in with a background in nuclear physics and has been doing computing for a number of years and is leading a significant project to help deliver a step change in computing capabilities. It's going to be imperative on our industry to learn as much as we can if we want to prepare for the future, if we want to take advantage of these systems. So Doug, thank you very much. 
Doug, forgive me, I, I don't want to embarrass you, um, but let me just compliment you on one thing. When I started at Oak Ridge uh, nine and a half years ago, Doug was the director for science for the leadership computing facility, and I was brought on to, br to create an industrial partnership program. And I can tell you that it would not have happened without Doug Cothy, because Doug was highly committed to ensuring that industry could get access to the leadership computing facility there. We didn't have a process for making that happen very easily. We didn't have the procedures down. We weren't even sure who, uh, how we would do this. And it was really Doug's leadership and uh, being there. And that's why companies uh, like Exxon and Chevron and, and all of the companies in the oil and gas have pretty ready, whether, you, whether or not you take advantage of it is another question, uh, that's your choice. But the fact that we have uh, an open center now that industry can uh, apply to get time uh, at is very much a credit to Doug. And, and while we're talking, so the, the Exascale Computing Project, and I'm sure Doug will get into this, is highly collaborative. And one of the reasons that we're here is to collaborate with industry as well. And so I, I appreciate Doug's being a, at meetings like this and, and sharing the, the vision for ECP and, and involving a, a wide variety of people in the community. So. Thank you, David. Thank you, Susie.